So I'm uh, going to spend the next 20 minutes or so on IL-6 biology. Uh, another very um, exciting space, talk a little bit about it, um, uh, 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 immunology, and then uh, kind of uh, turn and talk about some interesting, uh, a few uh, interesting things going on in terms of um, uh, new therapeutic breakthroughs. So, uh, you know, we're, we're now, we've had an approved agent for uh, IL-6 for over a decade uh, inhibition. And, uh, you know, we all are, are, are varyingly uh, familiar with its origin. This was discovered um, as a product of T cells uh, that appeared to stimulate uh, B cells uh, and enhance uh, antibody production. It was called B cell stimulating factor. Like other cytokines, and you hear uh, about uh, TNF uh, uh, after the break, I mean, uh, there's so many stories of immunology, like blind men on the elephant. You know, who's studying this in, you know, uh, cattle with parasitic diseases, and who's studying uh, explants of joints, and you know, who's studying uh, anti-cancer effects? All looking at the same molecule. So uh, IL-6 uh, it, it does deserve the the overused term uh, that we uh, have in immunology of this pleomorphic uh, cytokine because it has so many far-reaching effects. What we do understand is part of a large family of cytokines that all share um, some homologies, particularly in their triggering. Um, uh, and uh, as we think about inhib inhibiting them, uh, off-target effects um, always are raised. So in the, in the interaction of autoimmune disease, we know IL-6 quite well. I've been talking to people this morning, talking about measuring IL-6 in their patients and looking at it. Um, IL-6 is uh, important physiologically. When it's elevated, it is a key driver of the acute phase response. We know that. And uh, that uh, in, its, um, uh, in its programming, uh, hundreds of molecules are, are elevated. And, uh, you know, acute phase reactants, uh, proteins that rise more than 25% in the inflammatory response. IL-6 is not the, the single uh, or the, the solo uh, uh, agent responsible for this, but does play an important role, particularly in CRP and uh, homologous molecules like SAA. I talked about its role in uh, B cell um, uh, 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 development and function, and, uh, you know, it is being neutralized in certain diseases like aquaporin 4 disease, um, uh, neuromyelitis optica, uh, where it appears to be uh, highly effective. Um, it is hugely important in uh, hepatocyte uh, physiology. If you take a, uh, a mouse and cut out two-thirds of its liver, within 10 days it almost has the whole liver grown back. Um, and that is um, uh, largely driven by IL-6, and conditional knockouts will, will uh, remove that ability. Um, it has a, a, a lot of uh, function in uh, hematologic function. We know this from um, infusion studies in normal people. When you give uh, uh, IL-6 um, uh, to people, they become anemic. Uh, they get leukocytosis and thrombocytosis. And now when we use these drugs uh, and neutralize IL-6, uh, you know, the uh, hemoglobins rise, uh, but at a cost of, um, uh, you know, lowering uh, white uh, cell counts and platelets. So there's all of these things that we see. Uh, its role in osteoclastogenesis is uh, formidable, um, and uh, this particularly uh, uh, may play a role in myeloma-associated uh, uh, bone loss. The signaling story of this is uh, important um, and has been elucidated over the past year by a number of groups. And until recently, we just talked about cis and trans signaling. There's only a handful of cells that have um, the IL-6 receptor, hematopoietic cells, hepatocytes, uh, and a few scattered cells in, in other tissues. Um, the IL-6 receptor itself has no sig signal transduction capacity. It must link with a, another molecule known as GP130, which is ubiquitously uh, expressed on all uh, nucleated mammalian cells. Um, uh, and uh, that uh, uh, functions via jack stack signaling, um, uh, of which we've just been talking about. Um, 
cis-signaling, which are, is for those cells that express IL-6 receptors, considered to be predominantly a physiologic function. Um, uh, Trans-signaling, which occurs when the soluble IL-6 receptor, which has been cleaved by um, uh, enzymatic action, uh, binds to its cognate ligand and then lights to any cell expressing GP130. Turn on anything. That is considered, in, in rough terms, a stress response. And um, we should ask ourselves, what did the drugs um, that we use to neutralize IL-6 take out? And at the present time, uh, they affect both of these pathways. Recently, and I don't have time to go into this, a very unique um, uh, and third mechanism of uh, uh, IL-6 signaling has been described called transpresentation. I'll mention it in a second. Um, uh, the role of uh, cytokines in generating uh, T cell differentiation is critical. And this is an overly simplified um, uh, uh, schematic. Uh, shows that IL-6 is prominent um, in the differentiation of uh, a variety of uh, uh, T cell or functional T cell subsets, um, uh, including uh, uh, predominantly uh, Th17 cells. Um, IL-6, with or without another uh, a, a handful of other adjunctive uh, cytokines, uh, including uh, IL-1. Um, uh, have the capacity to generate a physiologic Th17 response. IL-23, which is not necessary to generate these cells, but uh, actually imprints upon them um, pathogenic uh, uh, capacity, is also important. IL-6 is important in um, uh, T follicular helper cells, which are important in uh, B cell production. Um, and uh, 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 there's a, uh, 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 a plasticity of these cells uh, that can uh, allow them to uh, morph. I want to make a point before I talk about anything therapeutically that Th17 cells are often, we, we think of them as obviously a source of IL-17. They also make IL-21. Um, uh, and when we inhibit this pathway, uh, we think that this is a favorable response, but it should be noted that Th17 cells are important physiologically. Uh, they are a link between uh, hemopoietic cells and viscerosomatic cells. They are important in mucosal defenses. We would like to, like to leave them intact um, um, and in HIV-associated enteropathy. They are gone, and there is a huge gut leak syndrome. Physiologic uh, Th17 cells can be driven to pathologic uh, 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 Th17 cells by a variety of, uh, of uh, molecular pathways. Uh, I've mentioned IL-23, um, and I also want to mention this uh, newly described uh, transpresentation, where dendritic cells actually, uh, which express uh, the IL-6 receptor and GP130, um, will secrete local regionally uh, IL-6, which binds to the IL-6 receptor and then by cell-cell interaction binds to an activated Th17 cell. This can drive animal models of uh, demyelination. And just this uh, uh, process uh, is very recently described in some of the continuing work of uh, Stefan Rosejohn. So I think we'll hear more about this as we move along. IL-6 targeting is a very rich space. There are a lot of different drugs. We have two approved drugs. Uh, at the present time, uh, as, you're, as you all know, uh, tocilizumab and cerulimab, uh, and new indications are coming. Uh, most of the, the, both of the drugs we have now inhibit the receptor and thus inhibit both cis and trans. Um, uh, uh, cerucumab, which was in trials in rheumatoid arthritis and GCA, um, has, uh, that development program has been stopped, but interestingly, it is still in clinical trials for uh, treatment of refractory depression. IL-6 is very important in the central nervous system uh, pathways, and there's a lot of exciting things going on in that space. Uh, a variety of other molecules are, are uh, um, uh, being investigated. The only unique molecule is this uh, GP130 analog uh, that selectively inhibits transpresentation. Uh, that's only used in Europe um, uh, for IBD trials at the present time. So IL-6 is important in cardiovascular physiology. Uh, it is highly metabolically active. We know that as you have a higher body mass index, you have higher CRP levels. It's being driven by IL-6. 
Um, this has been looked at when we inhibit IL-6, you know, LDLs rise, HDLs rise just slightly less, uh, total cholesterol rises, is this good or bad or indifferent? There have been a variety of in vitro studies, including uh, this measure study by uh, Ian McInnes and colleagues, that suggested that the rise in um, uh, lipoproteins seen with IL-6 inhibition uh, actually uh, skews them to more metabolically active and more highly efficient uh, transporters uh, of, uh, of lipids. So HDL uh, becomes more physiologically activated, uh, becomes more anti-inflammatory, immunoregulatory. So there was a hint that this may not be bad, even though the package labeling says we have to monitor lipids. This very interesting study from the ACR, uh, Mark Genovese, um, looked at the ability of ceruliumab uh, with uh, DMARDs to actually directly affect uh, fasting glucose um, uh, uh, and uh, hemoglobin A1C, and they looked in two populations of patients, uh, diabetics and non-diabetics. And I point out here that there were statistical declines in fasting glucose, statistical declines in hemoglobin A1C, and small but significant gains in weight uh, by inhibiting IL-6. This is a vote that IL-6 inhibition is uh, not bad for cardiovascularly. It's actually moving things in the, in the right direction. Tocilizumab has been around for uh, a decade. Um, we uh, know its indications. Its most recent indication is for giant cell arteritis. Uh, the GIACTA trial was pivotal. This is, a, this is an important disease. And with the aging population, uh, there was a lot of incident giant cell arteritis. Uh, this trial demonstrated a fourfold increase in um, uh, relapse-free survival um, uh, in, uh, between weeks 12 and 52 in patients with documented giant cell arteritis. Um, also allowed the glucocorticoids to be decreased by half. Um, uh, so it's a dramatic drug uh, in, a, in a new indication. What was interesting to me, and this is uh, some work uh, by Vibika Strand looking at quality of life measures, is this. And I think a number of people have uh, already seen this. This is um, looking at um, uh, the difference in, uh, this is SF36, this is a spidergram. Uh, the more you go out to the periphery, the more healthy you are in these quality of life measures. Um, in this group are the group treated with placebo and then the group treated with two doses of, of uh, two different doses of tocilizumab. And there is also a group in here of age match sex match controls with no giant cell arteritis. I will merely point out the, the provocative observation is that the quality of life is better to have giant cell arteritis on tocilizumab than to be healthy and have no disease and not be on tocilizumab. So I don't know what's up with that, but um, uh, it may be speaking to its central nervous system capacity. It's an interesting uh, uh, thing. I mean. It's, it, it is what it is. Uh, it needs to be teased out. Um, uh, finally, uh, CAR T cells. I'll end with this. Uh, these are um, uh, cells that have had uh, a, a T cell receptor genetically imprinted in them. Um, uh, these work great for cancer when you have an antigen like a, a, a B cell malignancy or you can make a, a, a CAR T cell to CD19 or CD20. Um, Having an antigen receptor on the surface, and they used immunoglobulin, not T cell receptor, so it's MHC independent, is great, but the cell, how is the uh, immunoglobulin going to activate a T cell? Well, it doesn't do it too well, so they bioengineered it to put in uh, uh, the remaining uh, signal, signal one, signal two, um, so they have not only uh, binding of the receptor, but you also have co-stimulatory molecules in terms of CD28, and they've added on actually uh, additional co-stimulatory molecules, many of the things Greg was talking about uh, and doing this. So these are lively cells, and they are active cells, and when they go to work, they really go to work. There's a new syndrome that's called cytokine release syndrome after chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy, um, and this almost killed the first child that had this disease at Penn, um, um, uh, uh, but uh, uh, being good biologists and good clinicians, they knew that this was a cytokine storm. They looked at the cytokines, and they found that um, uh, IL-6 was elevated, um, and now uh, newest indication for tocilizumab uh, is um, 
uh, treatment of cytokine storm. Lastly, we have cerilumab, the newest uh, drug uh, in the group. It is um, a uh, human uh, uh, antibody directed toward the IL-6 receptor. It has higher uh, avidity um, uh, to uh, the cognate ligand than the, the uh, first-in-class drug. It's indicated for the treatment of adult patients uh, with uh, moderate to severe disease who've had uh, uh, incomplete responses to conventional therapy. Uh, one dose of uh, 200 is uh, used. There's a lower dose that can be adjusted to. Question is, now like uh, TNFs, and you hear about TNFs after our discussion. You know, we have five TNFs. You fail one TNF, what do you do? You go to another TNF. You have two IL-6 inhibitors. You fail one, what do you do? Can you go to the other one? They're both targeting the same kind of thing. So it's just an interesting study. Um, uh, this uh, was an ascertained study that had a um, tocilizumab comparator drug, um, and uh, uh, they extended it. And uh, after the primary endpoint, patients who um, did not uh, achieve uh, uh, low disease activity or remission were then um, uh, uh, changed from tocilizumab to cerilumab. And uh, this is the question, this is the graph. So here you have it, 12 and 24 weeks. Uh, the blue bar is what I'd like you to focus on. These are people that weren't, uh, hadn't reached target, that merely had uh, tocilizumab uh, switched um, uh, to cerilumab. Um, uh, and uh, here are the doses, 200 and 150. So at 12 and 24 weeks, you're capturing almost 40% of patients. Now, you know, there's a lot of design issues with this. This is not a head-to-head -head trial. Uh, there may be some regression uh, effects uh, in this uh, as well, but this is the first hint that perhaps we have, and it may go the other way as well. That study has never been done. But I, I like the study, and I think it's uh, thinking out of the box. IL-6 is hard, hot as a target uh, for IMIDs. Um, there are new therapies evolving, whether they will have a greater impact. We have to learn how to use the drugs we have and advances in science uh, uh, may be drivers. So I'm gonna call our people up and we're gonna do our discussion, thank you.